Do you like dour and depressing movies? Do you like movies in which nearly the entire cast of characters is composed of miscreants, deadbeats, killers, and deviants? Do you like movies about religious fanaticism, serial murder, and political corruption? Do you like walking away from a movie feeling filthy and depressed? Well, guess what? I've got some great news. You're probably gonna love The Devil All the Time. Thank you so much for watching. Before we get started, click on that red subscribe button and the notification bell right down there. That way you know whenever I post a new video. Director Antonio Campos, who got his start making independent movies, directs this bleak and brutal film, which was released on Netflix earlier this month. Alternating between Ohio and West Virginia, it weaves a surprisingly intricate tale of love, loss, faith, and death. Lots and lots and lots of death. The Devil All the Time is really two films at once, but tells a singular tale about father and son. Is the son destined to grow up to be his father? Do the sins of the father impact the life of the son? Can a boy escape from a fate that's completely out of his control? These themes run throughout the movie, and ultimately it takes its time trying to answer all of these questions. Don't expect a fast-paced action movie here. Expect a movie with outstanding performances across the board from every single actor and actress, even if it occasionally buckles under the weight of its own premise. The movie kicks off with a young man named Willard Russell fighting in the Pacific during World War II, and moves throughout his relationship with his future wife, his battles with his faith, and the impact both of those things have on his young son. Willard is played by Bill Skarsgård, who you would most certainly recognize from his performance as Pennywise the Dancing Clown in recent adaptations of the Stephen King novel, It. This is a subdued performance from Skarsgård and one that helps carry the film early on. When I say early on, I'm not talking the first 20 or 30 minutes. I'm talking about what felt like close to a full hour making it clear that this movie is gonna be what we call a slow burn. Before I spend some time talking about the numerous outstanding performances, I do wanna criticize the elements that simply didn't work. Movies that take their time are fine, and I have zero issues with the flashbacks or the time jumps. Those all work well. The problem is, the way everything is communicated tends to alternate between too vague and too obvious. Here's what I mean. The Devil All the Time is based on a novel by Donald Ray Pollock, who also just happens to be the film's narrator. Having a narrator is fine, but Pollock simply doesn't have the acting chops to pull it off. Voice work is acting, and his weak delivery tells me they should have gotten, you know, a real actor to voice this part. The narration here is significant. It's not a small thing. Large swaths of the movie are directly explained by voiceover, and the script should have simply worked these explanations directly into the dialogue. Narration is a very hard thing to get right. The original Blade Runner is a great example of how not to do it, and unfortunately, the devil all the time follows in those same footsteps. There's a deep, meaty, engaging story here, but the way it unfolds often ends up offsetting the powerful tale of loss, love, pain, and suffering. I loved the story, but I didn't love the way the story was told. This is also an extremely bleak film, one that makes no bones about the world being a dark, oppressive, evil place, a fact that's reflected in the vast majority of the characters we meet. Religious overtones are strong here, and this is a movie that will be deeply uncomfortable to people of faith. The title of the movie is spoken fairly early on, and I'm still trying to figure out what exactly the devil all the time means in the context of what I watched. This is both a blessing and a curse for the viewer, as those who carry certain views will be asked to question them, but it also forces them to think and feel, which is an accomplishment for any great movie. This is the first time in a long time that I didn't laugh once during a film. The closest comparison I can think of is Prisoners, which just happens to be one of my top 10 favorite movies of all time. Yeah, I definitely didn't laugh at Prisoners either. So now that I've gotten my numerous complaints out of the way, I wanna talk about the one thing that absolutely works here without question, the acting. Apart from the questionable decision to throw the book's author a bone and let him narrate, everyone else here is awesome. Going into the film, I knew that Tom Holland would play a part, but I didn't know which other actors would pop up on the screen. If you don't want that spoiled for you, go watch the movie and stop the review now. Everyone else, 
Let's go. Bill Skarsgård's performance is Willard Russell. As I mentioned before, this is a purposefully low-key performance, but one that explodes onto the screen as the story moves along. We really shouldn't be shocked. We couldn't take our eyes off him as Pennywise, and that rings true here as well. Tom Holland plays Willard's grown-up son Arvin Russell during the second half of the movie. In a complete 180 from his role as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man, Holland brings all of the nuance required to show us a young man who simply wants to do the right thing, despite the nightmarish circumstances that surround him. Holland should be tremendously proud of this performance. It's not easy for a young actor to carry a film that's filled with A-list actors, but he's definitely up to the task. Eliza Scanlon plays Arvin's adopted sister, Lenora. While you could call her a secondary character, she's awesome here and has absolutely no problem keeping up with some of the bigger names. Jason Clark and Riley Keough play a mysterious couple who might be up to no good. Nobody really plays a sleazebag quite like Clark, and both actors are great. Sebastian Stan plays Lee Bodecker, a local sheriff who desperately wants to hold on to what political power he has. It's nice to see Stan playing something other than Captain America's BFF Bucky Barnes, and the devil all the time reminds us that he's a highly versatile performer, and he only helps bolster an already outstanding cast. Fun fact, Chris Evans was originally hired to play this part, and after dropping out due to a scheduling conflict, personally recommended Stan for the role. So I'm about to go on a little bit of a rant here. Whenever they cast Batman in a movie, people tend to lose their collective minds, usually for no reason at all. In the late 80s, everyone was mad that Michael Keaton would play the Cape Crusader. Same thing happened with Ben Affleck. Both men proved that the fans are generally psychopaths who don't know what they're talking about, and there was a similar outrage when everyone found out that Robert Pattinson would don the cowl next. If you have any doubt that Pattinson's the right man for that job, and you need proof that all of these fans are kinda idiots, watch The Devil all the time. Pattinson plays the Reverend Preston Teagarden, a despicable piece of human waste. As wretched and disgusting as Teagarden is, it's a testament to Pattinson's growth as an actor that he manages to steal every scene in a movie where every other actor and actress is also stealing all of their scenes. If this movie isn't enough to convince you, go watch The Lighthouse. So in a movie that's loaded with fantastic performances, a bleak setting, and an even bleaker but powerful story, what exactly happened here? The way that story is told just breaks the narrative and undermines everything the book's author and the filmmakers are trying to say. If you want to see some incredible acting, I think I've done enough to sell you on that part of the film. But just understand that going into The Devil All the Time, this is a movie with some pretty noticeable flaws. Thank you so much for watching the review. If you enjoyed it, please click on that red subscribe button. You can also like and share the video since that tells YouTube that my channel is worth promoting. Hit me up on my social media links below and sound off down in the comments. Let me know what you thought of The Devil All the Time. I'll see you next Wednesday at 9 a.m.